Hi and welcome to What's Not To Like and today we're looking at NIMBY by Nick Case and we played this game the, uh, the other week and really enjoyed it uh, it doesn't take too long to play uh, but it's got some lovely components that um, make it into quite a, quite a substantial looking game on the table which, it, which is good um, so it's, it's small and, and a kind of 30 minute, 40 minute game it is. Um, it does feel like it's quite. A, it's quite worth getting out and having a sort of physical encounter with. So, what Nick's done with this, I think we need to um, just applaud him for. Is is really just use lots of mechanics in really neat and tidy ways to to make a whole game that really hangs together very very well. And I think that's one of the things that increasingly in the in the hobby we're seeing. A, you know, people being able to do this, uh, people who perhaps in the past would have just become been games players, have become games designers, and that's certainly true in Nick's case. I know he's a, he's a great collector of games uh, and plays really, really well. But he's, he's started to get into designing games, and it is a, a kind of it's a different experience, but it's it draws upon all the experience he's already got from playing games. And um, as I say, it's a it's amazing really how people can tie everything up into a beautiful puzzle like this. Let's have a quick look at some of the the striking features, the things I think that work particularly well. Um, I think the um, the layout of the, of the game is very neat and tidy. It, 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 it sets itself up uh, almost automatically once you've got it. These, these cards are on the outside and the, the bees are all ne neatly positioned here. So it, it doesn't take a long time to sort of get things together. But draw attention to this because it's in four rounds and um, this card here is 14. Now you can see that the, the values of the cards vary around the edge. But this is 14 points, and this is 14 victory points. Some of these cards won't be used for victory points, some will. But 14 is obviously you know, it's a big number, isn't it? So uh, that's good. So in this round, it would be it's advantageous to be the person who finally gets hold of this card at the end, because that's going to be a big boost. But in the next round, it's a minus 7. So whoever gets this card is going to have a big negative at the end of that round. And what does that do? Well, it gives this simple game a lot of character. Because on the first round, you, you know, you're trying to strive to get there and time your ending. But on the second round, you're trying to not get there, time your ending, so you, you're still hanging around the beehive before collecting that card. And the other two cards, well, they're the same again. Oh, I've got the wrong one there. You've got a minus seven, and somewhere or other in the pack is a 14. So uh, you've got that nice uh, variation uh, within the game. Nick, Nick sort of, uh, I think, has done well to, to limit things in this game, so you're not overfaced. So minus seven and forty that kind of typifies the game really that you've got not not lot not variety numbers but you've just got those two numbers I think that's that's nicely done. Similarly in the hive, he's got two plus ones. This is where you collect these lovely honey pots which give you an extra strategy on movement, and you've got two uh, queen bee spaces here which allow you to pick up these cards or to develop these cards around the edge. And these cards give you. When you collect them on those positions, give you a plus one, plus two, plus three, depending on how valuable they are. Um, and, and finally, the, the third space is this um, swapping position. So you can swap position with a queen, which could be to your advantage, or you can uh, do this little shuffle on the, the move here, jump back in the turn order and have an extra go. You just get one chance to do it in a round, but it, it's another nice and neat variation within it. But it's kept that nice and tidy, hasn't it? So it's not, it's not asking players to take on board huge amounts of decision making because this is not a big decision making game in that respect. What it is, is a very clever little mathematical puzzle because how you use these plus ones, plus twos, plus threes and this, it, that's the critical thing. Being able to, to put, position yourself so you, you try and get the last card or not or try and pick up some really good cards when you get to the meadow. So when you actually get your bee out of the bottom of the hive here, that's when you collect one of these cards. But it could be this card, it's a good nine pointer, or you're about to pick up this card, it's only a three. You can simply throw in a plus one honeypot, discard that one, and take a better card of five. So that, that's, that's a little bit of the strategy of the game, really, but it's a neat puzzle. And as you can see, those cards, <laughs> they've quickly got out of the way. I know I've taken some off, but you can see that some get discarded. It's not long before you're round to this final imperative decision about how you finish off the round. Can you get that 14 points? Can you avoid getting the, the minus seven points? So it's a really nice game, and, and I was surprised when I played it the night how how well it worked in a four-player situation, um, and how people really really engaged with it. Because you have to not only do your own turn, but you have to keep an eye on what other people are doing. It's not over-demanding, and that's one of its strengths. 
Um, but it is a tight mathematical puzzle and that's, that's where the challenge is in the game. So well done Nick uh, and thank you all for watching What's Not To Like.